The following facts don't seem to be in contention. Even when he was Prime Minister, Boris Johnson needed money, and a lot of it. Mr Sharp was an old friend, and working with another old friend, Sam Blythe, a Canadian and distant cousin of Johnson's, he helped to discuss a loan for the Prime Minister worth up to £800,000. He was working at number 10 at the time, and he informed the Cabinet Secretary, Simon Case, which was proper. They agreed that because Mr Sharp was applying for the role of BBC chairman, he should drop out of any negotiations, and he did. Sharp himself says he was not involved in making a loan or arranging a guarantee or any financing. So, did he tell the BBC board before he was appointed exactly how close his relationship was with Boris Johnson? He didn't mention any financial discussions to the Commons Culture Committee... Mr Sharp was not only a friend of the Prime Minister, but a long-term Tory donor, and he was once the boss of the current Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak. The rules on public appointments are clear. You have to be absolutely frank about any possible conflict of interest. So again, to the first question, was he? This afternoon, William Shawcross, the Commissioner for Public Appointments, told Labour he would be reviewing the appointment. But there is a much bigger point here, I think, than the process. It isn't at all unusual to have the chair of the BBC coming from a party political background. In the Thatcher years, Marmaduke Hussey, Duke Hussey, had been a friend and ally of hers. Gavin Davis, in the early 2000s, had been a Labour government advisor. And, like Richard Sharp, he came from Goldman Sachs. Later on, Chris Patton, Lord Patton, had been a Tory cabinet minister and Tory chairman. In many of those cases, the chairman ended up fighting with the government that had appointed them on behalf of the BBC. So let's be grown up. It is possible to leave your politics at the door and fight for your new organisation. But, however... Nevertheless, these are new times, much harder times for the BBC. There is immense public scepticism about the organisation, attacked with a fury on social media, as it never was in the old days. A lot of people in this country think, to put this very crudely, that it's in the pockets of the Tory party already. And that the point of having a Tory chairman is to cut deals with a Tory government. So, in this new context, the Sharp and Johnson story is toxic. A chairman who'd wanted to sort the private finances of a highly controversial Tory Prime Minister and who is closely connected to the current one. It all looks cosy in a way the country hates. I'm not being in any way personal, but it would be much better for the BBC if Richard Sharp now stepped aside and a new chair could be found who wasn't party political or so deeply steeped in senior Tory circles. Now, Gabriel Pogrand, who you may remember, is Whitehall editor at the Sunday Times, broke the story and is with me here. Gabriel, thanks for talking to us again. Uh, can I first start off with what Richard Sharp says? He wasn't involved in negotiating or organising any loans or deals. That is quite significant, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, I mean, uh, that, that, that's um, an you know, important context. He, he, like Boris Johnson, says he had no detailed knowledge of any financing arrangement. He says he didn't find the lender. He wasn't involved in this underwriting of a loan or financial facility of up to £800,000. Uh, he is emphatic on that point, and I'm not putting forward any evidence to dispute that whatsoever. What Sharp has nevertheless acknowledged... Um, and you've mentioned it there, Andrew, is that he did meet Sam Blythe, a distant cousin, foreign citizen, um, a distant cousin of Boris Johnson's and a foreign citizen and businessman uh, uh, in the course of a private dinner where the topic of Boris Johnson's, I won't say penurious situation, but certainly his financial difficulties came up. Sam Blythe said he was interested in helping and Richard Sharp said that he would help in putting an arrangement in place. And he went to the lengths of meeting the cabinet secretary, the nation's top official in person in Downing Street, where they discussed this matter. That fact and the subsequent formal warning of the cabinet office propriety and ethics team to the prime minister, telling him to stop seeking Sharp's advice was not made available to either the DCMS committee or the four person panel entrusted with ensuring a fair and open process didn't have all the information in front of them in, in that case. Uh, Boris Johnson himself has broken cover wearing a woolly hat this afternoon to say that Richard Sharp knew absolutely nothing about his personal finances. The whole thing is absolute nonsense. And again, your reaction to that? 
Well, it's interesting. So um, John- Johnson's um, used kind of some characteristically florid language to dismiss the story. Um, he on Saturday gave us a statement characterising it as rubbish. And uh, as you say, um, he said on the doorstep this morning that um, Sharp had no no knowledge of his finances. I uh, tweeted that and interpreted it to be what 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 it sounded like on, on the face of it, which was a denial uh, in in all terms of Sharp's involvement. But I've subsequently been told by those close to Johnson that what he meant to say there was that Sharp didn't have detailed knowledge. But what's not being disputed was that Sharp w- was involved. He is a man who connected the guarantor with the civil service, subsequent to which this arrangement was put in place. Sharps has said there's no conflict. Um, I'm not sure he's the arbiter of that. I mean, he's he's by definition no longer the only arbiter, because there are going to be two investigations. Mm. I think the question is, should he have at any point been having face time with the cabinet secretary in respect of Boris Johnson, the then sitting prime minister's financial situation, while uh, a live applicant for this role and uh, indeed, at the time that he had this conversation with Case, it had been reported that Boris Johnson had already made his mind up that he would be the candidate. You know, number one is that right, yes. number two, the people have known. As I say, it just seems very, very cosy. Gabriel, thanks so much for clearing those things up and talking to us. Much appreciated. Listening to that was Greg Dyke, a former Director General of the BBC. Greg, great to see you. Great to hear from you. Um, It's a strange story, this one, because quite clearly the BBC, when they interviewed um, the Trust, when they interviewed Richard Sharp, didn't know everything and he didn't tell the culture committee everything but at the same time everybody i talk to says richard sharp is a bright and straight guy who would be quite he's quite a good director uh, chairman of the bbc he's the right guy for the job what's your view well my my view is that it's i don't find it a problem that the chairman of the bbc comes from the <laughs> political uh from the from the same party as as the, the those in the government. government um my view is that when Richard Sharp was appointed, I felt quite relieved, actually, because as somebody who supports the BBC strongly, I thought Richard Sharp's appointment actually meant that the pressure that was coming onto the BBC, particularly in those days uh, from Nadine Norris, Norris, who was the culture secretary, I thought that would be relieved, and I think that's what's happened. I think... You know, I think you've got to look. I mean, remember when I got appointed director general of the BBC, I went through exactly the same uh, issue because I'd been a supporter of the Labour Party, and yet I mm. ended up the most enormous bust up uh, with the well, Labour. As government. I just said, you, you all end up fighting with the parties that appointed you in the first place on behalf of the BBC. But my my other point is that perhaps the world has changed a bit, Greg, since since those days. The BBC is under huge pressure, and an awful lot of folk out there in particular, think that it's somehow in the pockets of the Tory party and it goes soft on the Tories. And this kind of story is very damaging for the BBC. It, it is, but I think what, what you must ask of the chairman of the BBC is will they, the appointment is, will they depend the independence and the integrity of the BBC? Mm. And I think Richard Sharp was quite a good appointment, actually, to do exactly that and to enable... Uh, some who supported the BBC to be heard within the higher echelons of a Tory government uh, where not everyone was on their side. 